Today we're going to be looking at the dexamethasone suppression test, which is used for the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome. To understand this test entirely, we first of all have to understand the hypothalamus pituitary adrenals axis. So we start off with the hypothalamus, and this secretes a substance called corticotropin releasing hormone, or CRH. The CRH then acts on the anterior pituitary gland, triggering it to release ACTH. And then this ACTH acts on the adrenal glands, triggering the release of three key hormones, aldosterone and other mineralocorticoids, cortisol and other glucocorticoids, and androgens. And it's important to note that this whole process is governed by a negative feedback loop. So as the levels of these hormones increase, it should feed back on the system, preventing further release from the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. Now, the dexamethasone suppression test can help to diagnose Cushing syndrome, but it can also help to find the cause behind it. So I'll quickly run through the causes of Cushing syndrome here. I do have a full video about the condition linked here as well, if you want to look at it in more detail. But as a quick recap, Cushing syndrome involves excess cortisol in the blood. And to remember the causes of Cushing syndrome, you can remember that something can go wrong with each stage of the HPA axis. So for example, there could be a pituitary tumor, which causes the anterior pituitary gland to release more ACTH, and that causes more cortisol release further down the axis. And when there is a pituitary tumor in this way, the condition is known as Cushing's disease. There could also be a direct effect with the adrenal glands, such as an adrenal adenoma. And what happens here is that the layer which secretes cortisol, the zona fasciculata, becomes enlarged, and this results in more cortisol being in the blood. Another rarer cause is ectopic ACTH production, for example, as seen in small cell lung cancer. And what happens here is that the cancer cells secrete ACTH, and that also has the byproduct effect of increasing cortisol. There could also be a direct increase in cortisol levels from exogenous steroid usage, for example, from medications or substance abuse. And the most common endogenous cause, so the internal cause of Cushing syndrome, is in fact Cushing's disease. And this is important to remember for the diagnosis of the condition. Okay, moving towards the test itself. The test procedure basically involves three stages. We first of all measure the pre-test cortisol and then inject dexamethasone into the patient. We then measure the post-test cortisol after around nine hours duration in the overnight test. And the whole principle behind this test is that dexamethasone is a potent cortisol analog. So it acts like cortisol, but it's just stronger. And the idea is that dexamethasone should theoretically suppress ACTH based on negative feedback. And we can look at these cortisol values to help us with the diagnosis of finding the type of Cushing syndrome using both the low dose test and a high dose test. So looking at the low dose dexamethasone test first, we have our normal HPA axis. And what happens is that when we inject low dose dexamethasone, the ACTH should go down and the cortisol should also decrease in a normal patient. What happens in primary Cushing syndrome, where there's a problem with the adrenal cortex, such as an adenoma, when we inject low dose dexamethasone, the ACTH does go down, but the cortisol remains high. And this is because the problem is below the level of ACTH, further down the axis. Just to compare this with secondary Cushing syndrome, here we have a problem with the anterior pituitary gland, such as a pituitary adenoma. And you can see that there's quite a lot of ACTH being produced, as I've highlighted in blue. So when we give low dose dexamethasone in this case, the high level of ACTH does go down slightly, and cortisol also goes down a bit but it remains high compared with normal values. And this is because the level of ACTH was already so high to begin with. So from both of these results, you can see that the low dose test helps to confirm a Cushing syndrome being present, but we have to perform the high dose test to actually find the cause. So in an example where a patient has been found to have a Cushing syndrome after a low dose test, we can conduct the high dose test to find out whether there's a primary cause, a secondary cause, or something external going on as well. So just to run through this process, 
if there's a primary problem, so an adrenal adenoma, again we have our axis here and is a problem at the adrenal level. So when we inject high dose dexamethasone here, the ACTH goes down, but again the cortisol remains high here because the problem is downstream. Comparing this with a secondary Cushing's disease, uh, what happens here is that again we have the same axis, but this time the high dose is enough to suppress the ACTH below a specific value and the cortisol should decrease enough in this instance. And this helps to distinguish between a primary cause where the cortisol remains high after the test and a secondary cause where the cortisol is reduced. Note that if the cortisol remains very high after the high dose test, there might actually be an ectopic ACTH source, such as a small cell lung cancer, which has to be investigated further. Here we have a quick summary table just outlining the results from all of these tests, as well as the serum ACTH levels, which can be useful in these cases. Based on all of these results, we can guide further investigations, as well as the management options for Cushing syndrome patients. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.